Today, with the help of Affinity Photo, I'm gonna show you how to take an image like this, turn it into something like this, using a cool technique with a terrible name called Chromatic Aberration. Let's go. What's going on, everybody? My name is Dave Connery, and I'm an artist and designer based in Southern California, and I wonder if that's even relevant anymore. And if you haven't noticed, I'm doing something new. And if you're new here and you don't know that this is new, well, this is new. Anyway, so what is chromatic aberration? It's kind of an, an unfortunate glitch that happens sometimes in images. There's a little bit of a color fringe that happens within an image. A lot of times photographers, like, they don't like it. But if you like me, then you appreciate this because I embrace the glitch whenever possible. Right now, I'm gonna push this glitchy effect as far as I possibly can in Affinity Photo. Into the screen! So we've got here a picture of a lovely bird that I extracted and borrowed gracefully from somebody over on Pexels.com. I'll put a link to this photographer in the description if you want to go check them out. But let's make this image a little less pretty, shall we? The very first thing you want to do is make sure you rasterize the image because if it's not rasterized, this technique will not work. And if I back this out a little bit, you can see that I've actually extended it past the trim line or the border of the actual image itself. And that's on purpose. I'll show you in just a minute why. Right out of the gate, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this layer two times. And I'm just going to go ahead and just switch them over to overlay. Kind of like almost more robust version of the image right there. You could just leave it just like that if you wanted to just make it more pow, 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 pow. But that's not what we're here to do. So I want to go down to my studio and open up my channels palette. Now you'll see here that there's two sets of channels for this image and the reason that is is because we've rasterized it. These are actually the composite channels for the whole particular image but these here have been created once I rasterized it and this is the red, the green, the blue, and the alpha for this particular layer. Now you're not going to see any change when I do this but if I click on any one of these particular layers the information is going to be independent to that particular layer. So I'm going to go and click on this first one here and I'm going to hover over the red and I'm going to right click and I'm going to go invert. But then if I go over here to the top one and then I hover over the green, do the same thing, right click and invert. Nothing appears to have happened. Can't really tell anything, but I'm going to take this first layer and I'm just going to click and I'm going to drag any direction. And then I'm going to take this second one and I'm going to drag the opposite direction. I'm going to back that up just a bit. Normal color fringing, the stuff that photographers don't want to see would be something more like this. And I'm going to zoom in really close for this. Normal color fringing would be something like that. You can tell just by looking at that, it's not exactly attractive. Go back, this would be normal and this would be the fringing. They don't want that. And technically we don't want it either. We actually want to push it as far as we possibly can. I'm gonna push it way over here, push this one way over here, and now this bird looks like he's got three eyes all staring at directly at me. And that's pretty much it. That is chromatic aberration in like three, four steps. But again, if you're like me, that's not good enough for you, is it? Of course I'm gonna push this one a little bit further. In fact, actually, I liked it when I did an angle. I just thought that was a little bit more interesting when I did it last time. But let's just say I'm not happy with just that. Maybe that's not enough for me. Maybe I wanna go even further. So I'm just gonna go to this top layer. I'm gonna duplicate that one. But then I'm gonna go back here to the channels. I'm gonna go back to the, the one that I inverted and I'm gonna invert that back. But maybe I'm gonna invert the red again. Move that aside and then go up again. Or maybe that one wasn't right, so I'll go back and invert that again, and then maybe it's the blue that we need to invert this time. And that brings in another color interest, and maybe that's not where it goes. Maybe it needs to go here or there. I don't know. Maybe you just, you, you play around, you push it around, you see what works best for the image. The reason I said you want this to be off of the, or beyond the trim line, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna zoom in here. You see this right here? That's because one of these moved up too high and now the the aberration is actually happening here on the edge. This is not that bad for this one. Probably gonna trim this up anyway. Something to pay attention to. Maybe you want that image to be a little bit further out beyond the border just so you don't have to worry about that. You can also play around with the different blending modes. You can go to multiply, which is maybe too much, or color burn, or screen, or hard light, or hard mix is my favorite. I love hard mix. You might even try resizing it. Cutting, just adding different effects in different ways. But wait, there's more. This is pretty glitchy, but it's still kind of looks like it's missing something, like it needs to be taken to the next level. In the words of Big Daddy Kane, ain't no half-stepping. No half I'm gonna grab these three, I'm gonna group them, then I'm gonna combine all of these layers right now into one. I'm gonna do that by hitting Command, Option, Shift, E, and that combines all the layers and creates a brand new layer. You do the same thing in PC, I think it's, it would be Control, Alt, Shift, 
E. Don't quote me on that. Check your manual. And I'm gonna hide that group because I don't want it to be shown through with what I'm gonna do next. In fact, for the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and hide that top layer too. So we're just on the core layer. And then I'm gonna go down here to the adjustments and I'm gonna go to black and white. And I'm just gonna mess with this just to kind of get a good variation of color. I don't want too many bright brights. I want to actually see some details. I'm gonna create a brand new layer on top of that. And I'm gonna fill that one with roughly 50% gray. Up to edit and then fill with primary color. From there, I'm gonna turn that one to overlay. And then down to noise. And this time I'm gonna do Perlin noise as opposed to regular ad noise. I wanna zoom in here for this. I don't use this one a lot, but if you've ever used Photoshop, this is essentially like the clouds layer or distortion clouds, I think is what it's called. It's been a while, I forget. It's kind of hard to tell what's going on, but if I unclick it and click it again, you can see the differentiation. Essentially just bumped up the contrast, add a little bit of noise and just kind of makes it a little bit more interesting. Turn my top layer back on and I'm gonna go over here to my rectangle marquee tool. I'm gonna to draw one marquee and I'm gonna keep them all to one side just for the moment. And if I hold the control key on Mac, I don't remember how to do this on a PC. I don't remember the exact key. Whatever is not the control or the alt key on a PC, that's the one you wanna hold. You can kind of see that it's got a little plus sign next to my crosshair right there. And I'm sticking to this one side for now. And I'll explain why in a second. So I'm just dragging these this direction. And now I grab my move tool and I go like this. I probably did too many, but whatever. And as you can see, I've got a little bit of a glitchy discombobulation. And you can kind of see some of the black and white images coming through on the bottom. It's funny, I've done this before and it's actually come through better times other ways. We're gonna go and do it again, but we're gonna go from this side this time. You may not wanna go too nuts, but I'm going too nuts. And if you overlap the other one, that's okay too. Move tool, drag. Now maybe that's too many. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna redo that because I don't think I need that many. I'm gonna go and do some bigger ones though. And then I'm just moving it back and forth until I see something that I kind of dig. The thing about it is that if you do too many at the same time, then it looks like you did too many at the same time. Maybe do one at a time, two at a time, six at a time might be a little bit of a stretch. Yeah. yeah. Is it my absolute most favorite version of this technique? Probably not. But it's super easy for me to go back and do it again. All I gotta do is if I didn't want it, I would just take that layer off, bring these back up again. Why does that one look so much cooler than this one? Interesting. Oh, maybe it's because I've got that other, all that other layers going on there. That's why. That's why. That's why. That one might have been a little bit cooler, but whatever. So here's what we've got. We've got this one. And, uh, you know, let, if I wanted to, let's see. Command, Option, Shift, E again. This is totally on the fly, folks. And then this one set to, uh, I don't know, maybe uh, go the other way. Divide. I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe that's the way it works. I don't know. I mess with it so much. I probably pushed it too far, but that's what I do. I push it too far so that you can go, whoa, Dave, that's a little bit much for me. I'm going to back that off just a tad and play with it and go that route. You keep the too much stuff, Dave. I'm going to be a little bit more cool with it. And that's totally okay. Throw some type on there, make it a square format, put it up on Instagram and get a million likes. And that's just one of the many ways I do glitching. If you want to see more of those, I got that video right there. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See ya, here too, and there, and there.